My agenda today, as the name implies, I'm named Christopher Trojan, so I have a hidden agenda. So the hidden agenda is that I will, uh, let's say, upset all the gold sponsors of the event, uh, which are mainly the, uh, let's say, API management related companies. Uh, but no, to be honest, it's not about it. It's about the difference between the inflated expectations and the reality, and not really uh, except this perceived truth in promise, but whether this promise were really made or it was only thought so as a different story. So I know I'm not very well known in this area of the world, but well, I'm an integration architect, been leading uh, the implementation program of PLP2 and open banking for the largest voice bank in the last year. Not anymore with the banks, so whatever I say is not true for this bank. <laughs> of course, this bank is completely different than that. Yeah, uh, but the fact is uh, that I've been with Open Banking for quite a few years and Poland can be a little bit more known than here uh, and probably the only uh, independent participant of the Polish API working group uh, which is a terrible standard but a uh, terrible standard that hopefully will improve uh, and well been doing projects for banks, large and small, with several vendors over the years. Before that, was with the army and the electronic warfare, it was years and years ago, already forgotten. Okay, so guys, you know probably this research by thing, yeah? So the thing guys made beautiful work of basically querying the banks. Uh, they were ready for the regulatory deadline uh, in March, and let's say they say 59% they released. I would say half and half. Yeah. Anyway, some of them they didn't release the so-called regulatory sandbox, a testing facility for the fintechs to connect to, uh, so that they could prove or disprove the APIs are usable for anything. Yeah. So the bank didn't meet this first uh, problem, let's say, with exposing the APIs that were fake, half of them. I would say half of the half that claims that, that they exposed anything, which I did it. Yeah? And I have reasons to think so, but I will not give the name. Yeah? So there is a lot of APIs that work like that. Okay, there is one path for a pub that you can call and it responds. Uh, well, all the error scenarios, no, we don't really care. Uh, it might go up, but it's, it's an error scenario. Who cares, yeah? All those kind of things do happen. So, that was March this year, six months before the PSD2 implementation deadline in September. If you do think those banks will meet September deadline, if they didn't meet the, the March, this is not going to happen. And actually, well, we have another market. We have this the UK market with the CMA9 group, yeah? So they have been early with their deadlines. The FCA demanded that this, it is available both for the general public in 2018. And, well, of course they were late. But one thing that is interesting here, I'm actually putting happy metrics, which did some business of, of measuring them. Whether they, let's say, metric here, it's like how you get metric is something better or worse, that's another story. But one thing that's interesting is on the right. So banks who delivered later versions actually had less quality over time. So this is some me measurement of the maturity. Yeah? So they couldn't repetitively deliver. Okay. Now, so this is a, an extremely oversimplified understanding of the C level of how their banks run and their IT level. Yeah? So, okay, we have some channels, they talk to the customer, whatever the channels are. We have some middleware, and those are those guys where ESBs and things like that work. And then we have the core systems and everything around them like ledgers, and, and this is connected somehow usually a little bit in batch, a little bit more interactively. This is 
how the average CTO of a bank really thinks. I mean it. I've seen it. I talked to those guys. Twenty some of them in the last two years. Uh, so what do you think they would like to put their imagined box, open banking in the box in this picture? Do anybody has a theory? Why do they where does it belong in such understanding of the banking architecture? Okay, no volunteers, so I'll answer myself. So they think it's like a channel, they will drop it here, or we'll talk to the middleware, and it will work. That's the understanding they want, and they are notorious in this oversimplification. Yes? They don't want a transformational program to be run. They want to buy a system that does it, ideally. Yeah? So they consider it an implementation of the localized interface. Now, in their ability to deliver, they are used to working with large vendors of large systems that need horrendous amount of work to do. And they are very good in that, honestly. If you consider a replacement of a core system in a bank, it's a huge work. And they succeed with that. Banks do succeed with those kinds of exercises. But they are prepared for the programs that run years. They have a window of opportunity of release. Months year, two months, times a year. Four times a year is a good bunch, really. So now they don't run the prerequisites, the platform prerequisites that all those people here were talking about. Okay, we build microservices on top of. Docker, well, we have the service discovery, we have the DevSoft operations running. So we can have a hello world up and running tomorrow. That's not the case. Maybe now some of the banks did achieve it. But the problem is that those programs that they need to meet regulatory deadlines, they started 2016 and with the tooling and readiness that they have factored. Now, the AP man ag management story supported the bias they had. Supported in the sense that they told you that there is a method, a magic bullet that will deliver to, so that their program will succeed. And actually, this, I, I'm sure I quoted it random to, well, actually, both, no, I think so today it was presenting. But they could take RPG, CA technologies, whatever. Each of them has this story. And that has been extremely successful telling that story. Back in 2016, I was the head of solutions of the open banking, uh, let's say, accelerator framework yes. for, for one of the voice uh, software houses. I was trying to sell it and lost every single RFI, because every single RFI was telling an API management for open banking. I was not selling API management. So, means my accelerator framework is useless. You guys remember that, actually, we have met once. And because the Microsoft part, yeah, we, you've been doing West of Europe. I've been in Poland, and actually, we, at some moment, even com kind of competed with uh, Microsoft, who does offer for some point. But by the way, so this story was catchy. Yeah? The C level wanted to hear that and they cared what they wanted. And they believed that's what they need to do. <laughs> I'm in it. I'm in it. I've been in the pre sales with different organizations, but to some 20, I don't know, five months, let's say. And each of them expected this story to be solved. They didn't want to hear a transformational program needs to be run because you don't need, you don't have the capabilities that are basic for you to succeed. Nobody wanted that. So, by the way, have you heard it before? It's a good 
presentation of IBM in 2005 about what is this? SLA. Yeah? I mean, this is the same story being told, you know? Just take our magic mediator, put it in between whoever talks to whoever, and it will implement everything you need. Your resiliency patterns, your discovery, all you will secure it. That's the story. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Well, the API management was not meant to be mediator between everything, but just the external and the internal. But it didn't put that way. I mean, okay, I'll skip that because it was put like today every single presentation about the API management listed all kinds of things that were there in a typical practice some time ago. Now we have hybrid integration platforms, more is being added. They still, let's say, added to the mix also service meshes, maybe some streams processing. Yes, it's being added. So over time, those become even more magical <laughs> in this ability to, to do everything. But the main component, the API gateways, fitted very well with this bias, the conceptual bias they had. Well, that's something a little bit like a channel that sits on top of the middleware, or actually sometimes it's next to that. That's some of, actually, a lot of bias that with API gateway. Well, ESB was, or actually use ESB instead, or mix it. And how this happened? Well, because they knew they don't want every single service to do all those repetitive tasks. Yes, whatever the tasks are, security, let's say, or resiliency patterns, or whatever, routing between instances. So they didn't want the red part to be everywhere. They just wanted the, the greenish one, which is the logic. So they said, yes, the API gateway does it. Or everything puts there. Yeah? That's the story, and if it ended like that, it would be not that bad. However, the problem is the real world works like that. There are orchestrations. There are services using other services. So they thought, yes, we want to keep it in the API gateway, so they didn't like that. So the service is talking through the API gateways with other services. Now we, of course, we will say, no, 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 we should have been using a service mesh, which didn't exist really, come on. Linker D was something that nobody really considered for those kind of things, yes. Conduit Istio were not even on the horizon. Yeah, but even if they were, banks are not ready to run them, by the way. But the problem is that they ended like that. So they had some logic, because for example, orchestration logic, come on, can you really tell where your orchestration of the service if you need to have a like, like I don't know, customer bonds, yeah, that uh, composes the, your available balance from your savings account, or maybe not a current account, and your available limit, okay? This, in most of the banks, that's true. true. Maybe most of them. Okay, you need to orchestrate. Can you really say where the orchestration logic finishes and where the really balance calculations happen? Not really, so they moved it up. And this is natural. But so basically, this thing doesn't do. I mean, look a little bit like a ESB now. It starts to look like. But if you add a real ESB now to that, it's somewhere below. This is how it ends in the bar. This is not that I'm saying it should end like that, but it does end like that. So the ESB was there before you ever actually started. It exposes some of the services. It has its own policies and, let's say, routing rules and everything there. On top of that, you build some services, and then you aggregate. This is the reality that I would say 80% of banks ended with. But that they should have ended or could have avoided it is a different story. But that's how it and now, let's go to something else, completely different area. I don't know how many of you are involved in deeply into distributed systems architecture. 
not many. Okay. So the problem is that the bank system is something that most of the banks run as a strictly consistent system. What does it mean strictly consistent? To be available, it has a lot of copies of all kinds of you know, balances, let's say. But when you ask whether I can pay out the money out of the ATM, it needs to answer with some certain level, well, you have enough money on your account. And historically, the banks have been building their system so that even if you had five copies of your call system, at any given moment, it knew that one, the one answer. Yeah? This is some uh, about strict uh, um, strict consistency in the AC style, yeah, which you might have heard from the databases, yes. And this is how core system work, and sometimes they don't work like that, but they hide it, so they pretend to be working like that. Yeah? So funds are coheren uh, coherency limited. They need to have one single view of truth. That's the understanding. It's not really the case they need it, but it's how core systems are built. And this means that they can scale beyond some threshold. Most of the banks have never hit this threshold. The largest banks out there running, let's say, 50, 100 million of accounts, let's say, didn't usually hit the problem with scalability of their core systems. They are just running very expensive platforms. The big IBM black boxes, who basically, if you need to provision the next pro uh, processor, you pay a million extra, and you get the processor bought into that. Okay, they can pay for it. The problem is that open banking might change. In my career, I have already seen two situations where the core systems under the query log, the query is basically the transaction that don't earn a single penny. So your balance queries, your history, whatever else, collapsed. Collapsed in the sense that they went to their uh, let's say, uh, area of load that it couldn't do their task. Usually, it couldn't close the day. I will not name the particular customers, but I've seen it twice, on different scale. And how did this happen? Actually, in both of those cases, it happened because they started their mobile channel, which they have written in their most obvious way. Okay, let's ask the system, every five seconds, what's my new balance? Yeah, I'm a bit exaggerating, but in the end, that's the way it ended. But this was still easy because the, I'm looking at my time left, uh, that they could guess. They didn't do the calculation, that's why they collapsed. But they could guess it because they knew how many customers they, they had. They didn't maybe know how many of them will use the mobile app. But over time, actually, it was quite obvious. The problem with open banking is different. It is a little bit similar to the mobile app because it is actually usually a mobile app behind it does it. But you don't know how many of those mobile apps the customer will have. And the patterns they are going to use to hit you are beyond your control as a bank. And I will tell you the exact story that will happen when it goes live on any larger scale. It's especially in the countries where banks talk to each other in some time windows. Yes? Let's say Poland, the main clearing cloud interface goes in sessions. Yeah? Several sessions a day. Everybody knows where the session happened. If you have a budget of four queries a day, and that's exactly the, the budget that PSD2 allows, yeah, what about the, uh, let's say, customer in session, yeah, so they can do it behind the scenes. When would you? try to get the information from the bank. Obviously, just after the session with the other bank, because that's where the new transactions appear. The problem is that the peak time, uh, I mean height, compared to the floor, to the average, is not anything similar those banks have ever seen. 
because the bank see like uh, twice as much in the rush hours and then a little bit less, a little bit more in the and the night there is some loads of the budgets, they can predict. They will see a hundred times, a thousand times big. And that's the moment that they will need to scale for the point in time, triple. And some of them will go beyond this point. This point is where actually adding a new resource, adding a new computer to your cluster gives a negative return they will need to change the architecture. And they cannot. Because to change the architecture, they will need more or less this. Even driven updates, eventual consistency to the operational data stores local to the APIs. You cannot even deploy the APIs until they actually do that and manage the streams. So they will not, and they will fail. But they will be. API management is all they needed. And they didn't still even know how to. Right. So there is other things. We added a centralized point, so we can scale very well here. We can add all those gateways, but at some moment we have a common resource, and the API management have been notorious about introducing uh, scalability problems. One of their favorite one uh, of doing it was putting a replicated relational database as a mean of communication between, between those guys here. So you can have maybe even a hundred API gateway instances, but they still hit the same Oracle database down there. Yes, I'm about to finish. Yeah, so I'm sorry, but we are dead. Let's skip this. This is about how it all would need to be added and you have the service meshes and things like that. This is about policy enforcement points and things like uh, the policy management points that have never been properly done really in the sense of the strength of representation of the policy and the logic of the policy that would need to be added. The API management are managing the policies, are implementing the policy enforcement points, but are not strong enough to really have the uh, policy to describe the logic needs for the open bank. So basically, you ended up doing something else next to it, not under the open bank. So basically, API management was good with the things that actually it was designed for. And it was the API uh, reverse proxy, which is the API gateway, yeah, more or less. It was quite good in showing the information about your catalog of the APIs to the developers in some rudimentary way, the moment that you wanted this to look like what you wanted, yeah, like the rest of your client. Well, those were CMS systems, the worst of the kind. Usually you would be better off just doing it in the proper CMS. A place to run some police enforcement point, schema validations, and trivial transformations, and same trivial. And that, it worked well. And saying it has a place but it's just not a simple problem. A lot of things can be, and those are examples. So examples, if you like, were to run the list, it will never go out of here. So, especially random selection, I'm just saying that from all kinds of ten, ten, uh, corners, you will need to ask questions when you choose, because when you choose the wrong answer, mm -hmm. the, the solution that is not flexible enough, you actually pay double, yes? Because you will not be able, for example, to connect to your hardware security module. So what, will you change your, whatever, 300 devices in the bank because your API management cannot get the uh, AES encryption right? You will not. Thank you very much. Sorry for taking a little bit more.